After acquiring data relevant to the situation, which is perceived to be in disequilibrium, the consultant and client analyze the data together to identify problem areas and causal relationships. A weak, inaccurate or faulty diagnosis can lead to a costly and ineffective change program. The objective of the diagnostic phase is to determine the exact problem that needs solution, to identify the causal forces in the situation and to provide a basis for selecting effective change strategies and techniques. Two other concerns are important in organizational diagnosis. First, it is important to use a diagnostic model when diagnosing organizations. A diagnostic model is a representation of how organizations function and is crucial in understanding organizations. Diagnostic models include the analytical model of Lawrence and Lorsch, the socio-technical systems model, and the force field analysis model. Although these models are not discussed here, they are important and should be kept in mind when approaching an organization for a diagnosis. Second, the data collection process should be considered. The most obvious step in data collection is defining the goals and objectives of the change program. This step is necessary to determine which information is relevant. The next step is to identify the central variables involved in the situation. The last step is to select a data gathering method. Although organizations generate a large amount of hard data, it may present an incomplete picture of organizational performance. The consultant and client may decide to increase the range and depth of the available data by using interviews, direct observation, and or questionnaires as a basis for further action programs. Stage 4. Interventions. The diagnostic phase leads to a series of interventions, activities or programs aimed at resolving problems and increasing organization effectiveness. An intervention is defined as an instrument or tool that will enact and accomplish a state or goal. Intervention is regarded as part of the implementation phase of an organization change, which is the core of an organization change effort. Interventions aim to change some aspects of an organization, such as its climate, employees, structure, or procedures, to improve the health or functioning of the client system. The definition of an intervention includes various important elements. First, an intervention refers to something that happens in an organization's life. Interventions include educational activities, methods, techniques observations, interviews, and questionnaires which are used to bring about organizational improvements. Second, an intervention refers to different levels of activities, such as a single task, a sequence of related tasks, activities that are related but also different, and an overall plan for the improvement of the organization. Third, an intervention implies joint collaboration between an organization and the client. For organization development, interventions to be successful, the interdependencies between various sub-elements of the organization must be considered. Argris distinguished between three tasks of an intervener, namely to generate valid and useful information, to help the client to make free and informed choices, and to assure the client's internal commitment to choices made. Generating valid and useful information. Valid and useful information refers to the factors and their interrelationships that create problems for the client system. Helping the client to make free and informed choices. The second task of the intervener is to help the client system to make free, informed choices and to provide the client with alternatives for action. Assuring the client's internal commitment to choices. The third task of the intervener 
is to assure that the client is committed to choices made. Interventions can be categorized based on the target group, namely a. Personal and interpersonal interventions b. Team interventions c. Intergroup interventions and d. Organizational interventions a. Personal and interpersonal interventions the central theme of personal and interpersonal interventions is learning through the examination of underlying processes. These interventions also focus on individuals and their development and growth within the organization. Sensitivity training laboratories. Sensitivity training groups are also known as training groups or T groups. T groups is an approach to human relations training which provides individuals with the opportunity to learn more about themselves and their impact on others, in particular to learn how to function more effectively in face-to-face -face situations. Transactional analysis. Transactional analysis involves a system of interaction analysis which assists people to understand their feelings and behavior and which helps them to form satisfactory interpersonal relationships. Behavior modeling. Behavior modeling is a structured, effective, and reliable method that can be used to train people in interpersonal skills. The rationality of behavior modeling is that behavior is shaped by external stimuli, that behavior is learned through the observation of other persons or models that behavior is shaped and maintained by the consequences thereof, and that behavior is repeated because of the reinforcement of similar behavior in the past. Life and career planning interventions. Life and career planning interventions are used to assist individuals to focus on their life and career goals so that they can be empowered to exert better control over their own destinies. Wellness Promotion and Stress Management Interventions Stress management interventions have embedded a range of practices that offer opportunities for individual development and employee well-being. Counseling and Coaching Counseling is used to help employees cope with personal problems which are interfering with their work. Coaching is used to help employees perform new tasks and or improve their performance of old tasks or skills. B. Team group interventions. Team group interventions are focused on group development and interaction between individuals within groups or teams. Team interventions can be applied to family groups such as intact work teams and special groups such as special project teams. The following team building designs are applicable to work teams. The family group diagnostic meeting. This type of team intervention is used to analyze and evaluate the current functioning of the team and to identify problems that the team should work on. The family group team building meeting. The family group team building meeting is used to improve the effectiveness of the group by focusing on task accomplishment, relationships in the team, and group processes. Process Consultation Interventions Process consultation is a philosophy of helping which involves joint diagnosis by client and consultant. Shine defines process consultation as a set of activities on the part of the consultant that helps the client to perceive understand, and act upon the process events that occur in the client's environment in order to improve the situation as defined by the client. A process consultant helps the client to become aware of and improve group and interpersonal processes. Role analysis team building. Role analysis team building is often used to clarify roles in a team when a unit is newly organized and team members do not know what others do 
and what others expect of them. Changes and reassignments have been made and the team and members are no longer sure how functions fit together. Job descriptions are outdated, conflict and interpersonal disruptions in the team are increasing, and the manager engages primarily in one-to-one -one management. Role negotiation team building. Role negotiation team building is used when the causes of a team's effectiveness are based on people's behavior that they are unwilling to change. Using this technique, team members ask each other to change behaviors that will make it possible for the other person to do his or her job more effectively. C. Intergroup interventions. Intergroup interventions are necessitated because of interdependency between teams and groups and organizations, conflicting objectives of teams, perceived power imbalance between groups, role conflict and role ambiguity, and personal conflict. Intergroup team building interventions. In intergroup team building interventions, key members work on issues of interface. The meeting typically involves five steps namely a working separately the two work groups make lists of how they see themselves how they think the other group sees them and how they see the other group b the two groups meet and a person from each group presents their lists c the two groups meet separately to discuss d subgroups are formed by mixing members of the two groups and these groups develop action plans. E. A follow-up evaluation meeting is held. Organizational mirror interventions. These give feedback to teams on how other elements of organization view them. Units meet together to process data with the objectives of identifying problems and formulating solutions. Third-party peacemaking interventions. A third-party peacemaking intervention is a technique that can be used to resolve the conflict between two or more people. Confrontation is an essential feature of third-party peacemaking. The parties involved in the conflict must be willing to confront the fact that conflict exists and should realize that it has implications for their effectiveness. D. Organizational interventions. Confrontation meeting. The confrontation meeting as an organizational development intervention was developed by Richard Beckhard as a one-day meeting of the entire management of an organization in which they take a reading of their own organizational health. Strategic planning intervention. Cummings and Worley state that strategic interventions link to internal functioning of the organization to the larger environment and transform the organization to keep pace with changing conditions. According to French and Bell, organization development practitioners should become experts in strategic management processes and need to have thorough knowledge of strategic management consent. Survey feedback. Survey feedback intervention is the most effective if the organization wants to include a large group of people. This type of intervention is used mostly in diagnosing situations that need attention within the organization and to plan and implement organizational improvements. This approach to organization development surveys the unit of analysis through questionnaires and feedback to all the relevant role players. Grid OD. According to French and Bell, the grid was designed by Robert R. Blake and Jane S. Mouton as a six-phase program which will last about three to five years. The program utilizes a considerable number of instruments, enabling individuals and groups to assess their own strengths and weaknesses. It focuses on skills, knowledge and processes necessary for effectiveness at the individual, group, intergroup and total organization levels.
The Grid OD program is effective because it showed greater profits, lower costs, and less waste. Job design. Job design is the process of incorporating tasks and responsibilities into jobs to make them more meaningful, productive, and satisfying. Various models can be followed in redesigning jobs, including the job characteristics model, the job demand control model, and the interdisciplinary approach of Campion and Berger. Quality circles. Quality circles are focused on customer satisfaction through continuous improvement and teamwork.